Uh, you know, I was with him. We were friends for 70 years. Uh, wait a minute. Let's be sure you're applauding me and not Morgan because I put up with it for Christ's sake. <laughs> Morgan Woodward today, and we're lucky to have Steve Stevens, who was a dear friend of Morgan's and also his agent. And a lot of people have got a lot of stories to tell, so I'm just going to tell two stories that I think uh, kind of let you really an insight to Morgan Woodward. Uh, Morgan uh, on White Earp, for the first time, got invited to a special event. Uh, I believe it's called the Black and White Ball. And you had to be invited to it. It's called a Black and White Ball because everybody had to dress up like somebody that was on a series or be on a series. So Morgan came up with the idea that nobody really knew who he was, that he wanted to show up with the mule. So he set it up with the PR department. Uh, he'll drive up in the limousine and they'll have a Wrangler in a pickup truck pulling the mule in a trailer. So here it comes, Morgan's all dressed up in his tuxedo. He gets out of the limousine, he looks back, he sees the Wrangler getting the mule out, and he starts walking down the red carpet and everybody is running towards him. And Morgan pulls out a pen and he's smiling and they run past him to the Wrangler. <laughs> and he turns to the PR guy and he says, who's that? He says, oh, that's Ben Johnson. <laughs> what happened was the Wrangler broke his foot and he called all his Wrangler friends and everybody was tied up nobody was available so he called his friend Ben Johnson and said Ben do you know anybody he says I don't but I'll do it so you'd get the check of course you know Ben had already done Mighty Joe Young and Shane and, <clears throat> and all these things now this is what Morgan told me he said he realized then that being an actor, you're just a puppet. And you recite the lines that a writer gave you. You stand where the cinephotographer tells you to stand. You go where the director tells you to go. And if you're lucky, the editor won't edit you out. <laughs> and if people like what they see, you might have an opportunity to earn a living in this business. And he said he reached in his wallet, took an imaginary ego, opened up his wallet, and in between two $20 bills, put in his ego, closed it, and from that time on, it was a dollar and cents business, and he was just going to be one of the guys. That was Morgan yeah. Logan. <clears throat> How Morgan and I became close, instead of just a business relationship, is I was, he told me I was the first agent ever to visit him on a set. He says, agents booked him in a job, took the commission, and that was it. And so he was doing a bonanza, I believe it was around 1971, uh, and I went on the set, and he said, it's a Friday evening, he said, let's go get dinner. And I said, fine, let's go to Nicodell's. It's right around the corner, a lot of you remember Nicodell's, great restaurant, all the stars used to go there, uh, right next to uh, Paramount. And he said, no, I want a good steak, let's go to Scandia's on the Strip. So we get in the car, we go to Scandia's, we go get a table, and we look at the bar, and there's Woody Strode, great Woody Strode, who's an old dear friend of mine. And he's sitting there drinking with Jack Webb. And Morgan says, do you know that actor, Woody Strode? I said, yes. He says, I, I want to meet him. I'm such a fan. So I get up, I go over there. Woody gives me a big hug. All six, five of them lifts me up. Uh, he introduced me to Jack Webb. Jack Webb. <laughs> <laughs> totally stoned. Uh, I said, I have a, a friend of mine, an actor, he's a great actor, Morgan Woodward. Uh, and I meet him, and he looks over, he says, I know who he is. So he comes over, we sit down, we have dinner, and we start telling Hollywood horror stories, as a lot of actors and agents might do, get together, and we start drinking, and we're drinking, and we're drinking. <laughs> the next thing I remember is the following morning. I wake up in this big chair in my apartment, and I open up my eyes, and I look over, and there's Woody Strode, still out cold, on the couch. And I start to get up, 
and there's a piece of paper tucked between my buttons. And I ought to open it up, and I go get my glasses, I put it on, and it says, I drove Love Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So that's it. I just want to turn this over. Thank you all for, for showing up. You know, he was the best bad guy to play good guys. I think he owes a lot of his great performances to Jim Burns, and the great writer who wrote Lobo and, 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 and other things. And, and, and thank you all for showing up. Let me take you back to early Morgan. We went to the University of Texas together. And uh, as uh, things went along, uh, some way I have no idea. Fess Parker, uh, two others, and myself had enough money to stay in an air-conditioned apartment house that had an elevator. Now, where we found the money to do this, I do not know. But it so happened that Morgan Woodward was also there. But he wouldn't spring for the rent. <laughs> So, just, Morgan's the only man I know of that when it got really, really hot, would show up with his pillow and sleep in the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you understand Morgan. The other side of Morgan, I decided that I wanted to learn to be a pilot. Morgan's a pilot. So he said, look, I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll look around, we'll find some thing of some plane, we'll buy it, and I'll teach you how to fly. And you've saved all this money, we'll own, we'll own the plane. So we did. We found probably the greatest, certainly the greatest airplane that's ever been made. It was an advanced trainer. It belonged to the general. It very seldom was flown. It stayed in the hangar, it was cared for un just unbelievably. Morgan found it. We bought it. Now, he said, now, you, I told you you really should go in to take lessons, but since we bought the plane, why don't you go to a regular teacher, and in case anything happens, you won't crash in our plane. Now, <laughs> this is Morgan's thought, folks. Okay. So I said, All right, we, we did that. And, uh, it was about, we bought, had the plane, it was about three or four months. But the first time, and I got to ride in my plane. So we go out, we fly for about 30 minutes. We land. We're getting out of the plane. Now it's fabric covered. It's not all metal. As we're getting out, Morgan noticed there was a spot on the undercarriage of the wing that was maybe a square inch. Maybe it wasn't quite that big, but let's call it a square inch. The next time I saw the plane was, I think, three years later, and it was laid out in 2,000 different parts. That's what Morgan had done to the damn plane with that one inch. That's the way he was. It's a, you get used to him after a while, but that's, that's Morgan. It's, that's enough. He, you heard all the good stories. You know, I was with him. We were friends for what? More or less for 70 years. Mm. Uh, wait a minute. Let's be sure you're applauding me and not Morgan because <laughs> I put up with it for Christ's sake. <laughs> no, you're not going to do that. Huh? Okay, that's enough. You're going to hear some people that have really good stories. You got any questions? I don't. When I are don't. you going to pay me the money you owe me? Did you? <laughs> no? Thank you. Morgan folks. will pay you back. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any memories of Morgan Woodward at all? Well, Morgan, yeah. I mean, it's, it, was, it was on the quest. It was in the pilot, I believe. And, and, uh, well, and then he, I think he came back. Mm -hmm. But the, the treat about working with gentlemen like that and, and, and ladies too, like Amanda, was they were character actors, but they were so prepared. And they just, they came in and they delivered the mail. You know, and, and that was, it's also a, a lesson that I think Kurt Russell told me, he said, you know, again, it was apropos of my working so hard, 
in every scene. And he said, you know, I find that there's usually only one or maybe two scenes in a movie that I can really do something with. You know, I can really, really go there emotionally. The rest of the scenes, you don't have to do that much. You don't have to work that hard. And it was one of those things about watching great character actors. They didn't overdo it. Mm-hmm. You know, they were very simple. They were just honest and just and, you know, and offstage, he was very funny and very sweet. And, and, you know, he probably put up with my antics, you know, as being a, like a fledgling actor studying acting, you know. Um, so, yeah, he was, he was very generous and kind to me. So um, God bless him for that. Morgan lived in Hollywood, and there were 72 steps up to his front door. Mm-hmm. And t- you're going to have to tell me how he continued to get into that house he was one of those, I'd say, send me a headshot and send me a uh, whatever. The older actors, they don't do that. They don't have computers. They don't deal with cell phones. They don't do anything like that. So how did he get up those 72 steps? Did He, he all- said the reason he was so old, the reason he made it to 93, is because of those steps. <laughs> I know how he, he, he said he'd go up and down these steps, and, <laughs> and it was an effort. Right. Uh, but toward the end... It would take him about 45 minutes I, to get down. I thought of, every time I go past there, I think of that. And I used to wonder how, because there was no other way to make an entrance. No. And of course, about three months ago, he puts in an elevator. Oh, well. Okay. And he never got to use it, which is oh. too bad. And then my last story, because I know there's a million out there, comes from Earl Holloman, who, when Earl Holloman calls, that's a phone, uh, phone call that you pull off the side of the road and talk to. He's mm-hmm. just fascinating, as I'm sure you know, mm-hmm. to talk to. And he told me something that I thought was really super interesting. You know that episode in Hackett where he was so mean to Glenn? Uh, I had eight minutes long, and I had to edit it down to four, which was I didn't know if he would be happy with, but he was. Um, when I was working on another show. But he said those two roles, one called for a weakling, which is what they hired Earl Holloman for, and the other for a big, mean bully, which is what they hired Morgan for. And they got it together and their heads to switch roles. Mm-hmm. And the, they went along with it. And so that is one of those fascinating things, I think, if you want to go back and watch that episode, keeping that in mind, yeah. that is really fascinating. Because it was a wonderful, yes, wonderful episode. Yeah, Earl liked doing that one, too. He, he, yeah. he loved yeah. that one. And so when I had to edit eight minutes of being mean down to four, a greatest compliment I could get was that you did a pretty okay job with doing that because that's not an easy thing to do when it's a continuous thing. So Morgan was an absolute trooper. He was the absolute best. He was a consummate gentleman, and uh, I know he's up there, you know, yeah. dancing with angels. Hi, my name's Ben Costello, and thank you, Rob. I'm here for Morgan. I wrote a book on the television series Gunsmoke and uh, had the pleasure of climbing those 72 steps <laughs> to interview Morgan. When we were doing the interview, I asked him, I said, Morgan, why did you retire? He's so great and everything. And Morgan goes, well, I went to an audition, and there were five college students at the audition. <laughs> and he brought all of his photos and his headshots and his resume, and he, which is impressive, as everybody knew. And he started to slide it towards the casting directors. And uh, they said, just narrow it down. What's the number one thing you think that you're remembered for? And Morgan says, well, I played the guard with the sunglasses in Cool Hand Luke. And one of the girls on the dais there with the uh, directors, casting directors, said, was that a musical? (laughs) (laughs) That's what we're up against. (laughs) Morgan said, Thank you, my dear. You just convinced me to retire. And, uh, but he was, he was just such a great actor, and you really were scared of him in some of the roles that he played, especially on Gunsmoke. But in real life, um, he was just a teddy bear. Yeah. And he'll, he'll be missed, really be missed. And thank you, Thank Rob. you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. I came up here, and I'm reticent to do so. But I had to because 
Morgan was my friend, and I, I really loved the guy because of his indefatigable sense of humor, his charm, his grace, and his great talent. When I, I grew up in this business, I started as a radio actor and Bobby Benson and the B. Barbie writers in New York City. And when I came out here, I got, had a number of divorces and I couldn't <laughs> afford to be an actor anymore. <laughs> so I started working with a guy named Leslie Stevens. And we did shows like Stony Burke, Outer Limits, uh, Name of the Game, Search, uh, Men from Shiloh, McLeod. And one of the things that I always wanted from the very onset, Sony Burke, I always wanted to hire Morgan. But my partner, who was the son of an admiral and very straight laced, was scared shitless of this guy. <laughs> okay? Because Morgan had a demeanor and an aura about him that was really tough and no bullshit. But he had something that I have grown to appreciate, not in my own life, of course, because I talk all the time and you can't shut me off. But Morgan had... <laughs> hey, settle down now. <laughs> God, I'm serious about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Morgan gave me a life lesson, and a lesson that all actors and performers should learn. It's called The Art of silence. Morgan Woodward breakthrough role was Cool Hand Luke. I don't remember a word he said. He didn't. I don't remember a word he said, but with Paul Newman, he was the star of the movie. He was everybody's remembrance. The takeaway from that movie was the silent man and the dark glasses. My partner was scared to put him on McLeod, the Virginian. He was afraid to do everything with him because of Morgan's ability to take nothing and make it into something great. So the reason I came up here today was to ask all of you to stand up, if you would, with me and give Morgan Woodward a send-off that he rightfully deserves. That's nice. Thank you. Very nice. Come on up. This morning, knowing I was going to come here, I uh, sat down and jotted a few things out about Morgan. Morgan and I were both on the Wyatt Earp series. He was Shotgun Gibbs with his mule Roscoe. And I played Morgan Earp, Wyatt's younger brother. Morgan and I had many long talks about the 1800s, the real cowboys driving longhorn herds up to the rails, their hardships and the end of the trail celebrations. We were young and happy, and happy to be working. At the end of the series, there were times when we didn't see each other. But in our old age, the film festivals, the Golden Boots, and the Gene Autry gatherings once again brought us together. Our last talks were mostly about age, pains, and our doctor's cares. <laughs> Often I see his eyes staring off into space. What were you thinking of, I finally asked my friend. He looked at me and said, at our age, um, I'm just wondering how it all will end. Well, I said there's a trail up there hidden behind the clouds. It's a special trail to heaven, not traveled by the crowds. I'm just going to saddle up and find that trail. I, 
I hear it's paved with gold. In heaven, I, I hear the longhorns, they'll be grazing, and it will be springtime every day. With the sun uh, shining up above and the smell of fresh cut hay. There will be knee high grassy meadows and a singing mountain stream. I'm looking forward to that place called heaven because it was part of my cowboy dream. It's all about believing in uh, the things that we can't see. The end of springtime when it's snowing or holding a seed in hand is going to be a tree. Morg, you are always part of God's good things, things that it takes to be a man, like reaching out to those less blessed. You are always extending a helping hand. Goodbye, old friend. I hope when that day comes, I'll be riding that trail you rode when it leads to God's blessed heaven, the trail that's paved with gold. Oh. Thank you, Morgan. Um, here at the ranch, as you may know. So anyway, I hope you had a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>